Hi, my name is Paul Horn. I am a uh, California attorney. I'm also a CPA. I'm here to talk to you about the probate process. As a realtor, you really need to understand probate. Why is that? So you can take listing, so you can represent your buyer that has a, uh, a house in probate, okay? Especially with the baby boomer generation, path, you know, getting up in age. The baby boomer generation is probably one of the wealthiest generation we have and they have a house that's gonna to need to pass on. They need you to help with that. If you don't understand the probate process, I believe you are leaving commission on the table. You're gonna, you're gonna cut yourself short. So I wanna talk about the probate process. So the probate process, uh, I'm gonna make this sh fast and short. Basically, sort of show the timeline of the probate process, okay? So let's say once the probate is filed, the, the petition for probate, probate is filed, and then it takes about six to seven weeks to get a court hearing date. When I get a, once I get a court hearing date, let's say the judge approves it, then the judge is going to issue an order and a letter, okay? So the issue, before you sign and listen agreement, you need to see that letter, okay? And basically that letter, that letter is going to be basically giving authority to the personal representative. The personal representative is normally the person that's the heir, the son, the daughter, that's going to be inheriting the property. We call them the personal representative, whether it be an executor or an administrator. And this letter, so you have to see that letter. That letter is going to give you the authority to sign, the, it's going to give the personal representative the authority to sign your listing agreement, okay? So that letter is going to be either limited authority or full authority. Full authority is easy. Full authority, all it means is, hey, you have full power to sell the house. What the attorney does is he gets an offer, right? You give the attorney the offer. The attorney sends out a proposed notice of action. The house is going to be sold. 15 days later, no objection, you get to sell the house. Very simple. One, one step before that, one step before that is something called an inventory and appraisal. That has to be done. The probate court will tell you how much the house is worth, and of course the offer's gotta be 90% of that, okay? So full authority is, is very easy. Limited authority, a little more involved, it needs to be confirmed by the court, okay? Uh, limited authority needs to be confirmed by the court, a court hearing date, very, very simple, okay? And then um, let's, say, let's say you sell the house, the person representative is going to notify all the creditors out there, hey, this person passed away, I owe so much money. So he would notify all the creditors, all right? And then basically at the very end is when the attorney files a piece of paper um, for final distribution. He's going to file a piece of paper with the court that says, hey, um, we have this, this much money, we owe all these people this, we sold the house and so forth. And then the judge will say, okay, that's fine. And so the final order comes out. All the money gets distributed, and that's the end of life. That's the end of the probate life. So look, I have and I have about a, a 30 minute, 35 minute office presentation on the probate process. We're gonna go more in detail in a 35, 40 minute office presentation. Have your office manager call me. The phone number is here. Have them call me. Have her call me, and then we'll. I'll come out. It's free, and I'll talk to you about the probate process, so you can feel more comfortable with it. I'll teach you how a probate process gets started. Hold your hand through what you need to look out for in the probate process and how to close it and which car form you need to do the probate. Thank you. I hope to see you soon.